micro stage. Uh, just wanted to give you an idea of what's going on and how that maybe applies to what uh, we're doing here locally. And uh, I had to include this slide just because it's a election year, it's very patriotic, and it's, uh, Donate Life America represents an entire country, but it works more locally and provides resources uh, for the local state teams um, and OPOs and, and such to uh, share with their, their constituents. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but there's one thing that I think is very important here. Um, the last part of that sentence, uh, continuing to develop a culture where donation is embraced as a fundamental human responsibility. I think that is so important. Um, we all work so hard to make that happen, uh, but we need to make sure that people get to a place where, of course, why wouldn't I be a donor? I, mean, I think of it like recycling. Um, you know, recycling isn't, hasn't been around for that long, but now people, well, why wouldn't I recycle? I mean, I can just um, do that, and that's something I should do, and everybody thinks it's a good thing. That's where we need to get with uh, organ donation, is of course I want to be a donor. That's, what's, that's the right thing to do. So a little, little overview of how the, um, the organizational uh, breakdown. Uh, Donate Life America has a board of directors made up of uh, executives from around the country. Um, along with an advisory council, which is uh, made up of the, the committee chairs of the different committees, which I'll, I'll read off because it's a little blurry. Um, and then each state uh, has a state team leader and a secondary leader that kind of oversees the overall direction of uh, outreach and uh, partnerships in that state. In addition, uh, the nine committees, uh, we have pretty good representation on those different committees. Uh, I serve as the chairperson of the Clinical Partners Committee, which looks at uh, developing resources and campaigns for getting the message out in hospitals and healthcare organizations and, and giving them the, the tools that they need to share it with their employees. Um, I also get a chance to serve on the advisory council that looks at the kind of the overall macro view of uh, where we're going as a country with donation. Lauren serves on the DMV committee. Uh, Wendy uh, just gave up her chair chairpersonship um, of the education committee, and she still is very involved in, in seeing some of the national initiatives there. Alicia serves on the media committee. So we have pretty good representation on uh, uh, the committees uh, from Donate Life America. There's uh, four main observances that Donate Life America coordinates. Uh, you're familiar probably with uh, most of them, but the one I want to spend a little time on is, is Donate Life Echo. Donate Life Echo was formed in partnership uh, with AMAT, which is the Association of Multicultural... Help me, what's the last day? Uh, uh, there you go, Affairs and Transplantation. And uh, the ECHO stands for Every Community Has Opportunity. The idea is taking the people that have already signed up as donors and encouraging them and giving them the tools to reach out to their community, reach out to their network of friends. And it's really directed toward sharing that message on social media, be it Facebook, Twitter, uh, or the like, and getting that message out. Uh, because for those people that are already signed up, giving them that opportunity and those tools to share it with others. Um, you're probably aware of uh, um, Life Month, obviously, and Donor Sabbath. Blue and Green Day this year is on tax day, so hopefully uh, we'll get some <laughs> positive coverage of that day, uh, but that's another fun, fun thing for us. Some other Donate Life America programs that you might not be as familiar with, Donate Life Champions is a program uh, developed to award uh, sports uh, figures, athletes, coaches, the like, uh, with awards and recognition for sharing the message about organ and tissue donation. Obviously, you know, the transplant games, the Rose Parade float every January 1st that we support. Uh, we send somebody to ride on that float and support that effort. Flags Across America is a program specifically uh, for businesses and hospitals uh, to promote the use of the Donate Life flag, uh, flying that Donate Life flag, displaying it, uh, just making sure there's visibility. Donate Life Voices is a program primarily for transplant centers, giving the resources for their patients to share that message, uh, giving them the tools and, and the training so they have uh, that information. And the Wish is a film that was uh, created just over a year ago uh, for use in the faith communities, uh, specifically the African American faith communities. So donor designation, we all look at numbers. This is just a quick update of where we are nationally. Uh, from the last most recent data we have is of uh, Q3 of 2015. You see that we've increased to 128 million people in this country who have currently signed up as donors, which uh, 
uh, equates to almost 52% of the adult population. And uh, that's 18 and older. 52%. When you think about it, if you get 52% of the country to do anything, we're doing a good thing. Um, so that's that's great. And we see that uh, we continue to increase and 37 states have over 50% of their adults signed up as donors, which is terrific. So just give you a, a little comparison of where we're at. Um, take this a little bit with a grain of salt, but uh, this just kind of shows you where we're at, where we are in relation to the rest of the country. Green is the national average. Here's New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. So uh, that again equates overall to 51.7% of the adult population. Howard already showed this with you, but I think it's important to note again, you know, designations lead to transplants. Um, this is a, um, I like to think all the efforts that we do to get people signed up as donors directly makes this number go up. And this is what the end result of those efforts are. And uh, you see such an increase, and I also wanted to share with you the breakdown of who received these organs. Um, you see about 42% of the recipients of those organs were between the ages of 50 and 64. And you see uh, uh, the breakdown of the different organs that were transplanted last year. I'll, I'll hang on this slide just for a second so you can take a look at it. So I just wanted to give you a kind of a feel for um, who is receiving those organs that uh, have been donated. That's all yep. deceased. All these are all donors. This is deceased and living. Oh, that's right. These are all, so last year there were 30,973 organs transplanted from both living and deceased donors. 81% of those were from deceased donors, 19 from living donors. So the other thing I want to share with you is the Donate Life Registry. It's a national registry that was launched um, right at the Pope weekend. Um, this last fall, and it's uh, created as a complementary registry to all the efforts that we're doing at the state level. It's not meant to replace our, our registry that we have in Pennsylvania or Delaware or New Jersey. This is to supplement that. And it was created by Donate Life America uh, because uh, they kept getting um, requests and, and, and uh, inquiries from different businesses across the country of doing some national campaign. I don't know if you're familiar with the Donate Life America page. You go there, and there's this map. And if you want to sign up, you have to go to this map and click on your state. And then you go to that state, and then you have to fill in the information and click again. And they were finding that for every additional page you visited, we're losing people. Yeah. And so uh, they created this national registry for several purposes. For one, let's say Walgreens. Um, you go to Walgreens and you're checking out, and you know, you've ever seen like donate a dollar to homeless pets or all those different causes. You know, it would be great if you could say, sign up as an organ donor, swipe your license, or do something that way. And it would go to this national registry because it wouldn't have to try and figure out which state, okay, which state are you in, what, which yeah. registry do we need to go to. It's not meant to, to uh, change what we're doing locally, it's meant to supplement what we're doing. Uh, the intent is, while it's not perfect, we'd better, better to have someone in one of them than not at all. So uh, we'll continue to do what we're doing. I just wanted you to, to be aware of what's happening nationally. And, the nice thing about this is you can create a campaign. Uh, so they created a, a Pope campaign, and I, I kind of liken it to those that have re started Dash teams. You can like reach out to your friends to sign up to your Dash team. You could create a campaign on this national registry site and send it out to your friends to sign up as donors. If this is your campaign, this is how many you try and hope to reach, and they sign up via your page. So that's uh, kind of one neat thing about the national registry. The new campaign that's current, coming out very shortly is the Point of View campaign. And this is something that Donate Life America hasn't come out with a new campaign for almost 10 years. And so they're changing the efforts and the idea is to see the world through the eyes of the recipient. And we focus to get people to sign up and save lives, but what does that truly mean? To somebody that doesn't understand it, uh, we want to kind of share those experiences and those stories so they do understand. And just kind of tweaking the language a little bit. Organ, eye, and tissue donors are life donors. You're donating someone's life. It may not seem uh, uh, all that unusual for us to say that, but you know, sign up as a donor. You'll donate somebody's, their life back. I mean, that's what we're looking at. Um, and again, it's intended for the people that are already positive or neutral about it, but just haven't signed up yet. I mean, we've seen research, 95% of the, the public supports organ donation, but yet you see only 51% of adults have signed up. So targeting at those folks to uh, get them to take that step. These are just a 
a couple pictures of some of the different graphics. You see this young boy is a liver recipient. So the idea is you show him both as a picture of him and also a picture of him from a different point of view going down the slide. What it's like in his eyes to experience going down the slide or the tissue recipient to stretch now that she's gotten her ACL, she can go running again. Or the, the liver recipient, now that she received um, the liver, she can play with her kids. Uh, so those are some of the different ideas to uh, from the, the coronary recipient. You can now see the drive again. You know, seeing from their point of view what it's like to experience um, that gift. Some future initiatives. Um, these are some pretty broad, but to prepare people for questions they will be asked when a family member or loved one dies or is listed for a transplant. You know, we, we ask people to sign up, but we don't often tell them what does that mean? What, what, what's the, you know, what's gonna happen next? You know, kind of just preparing them for their conversation or God forbid somebody in their family needs a transplant. Living donation is, is going to be increasingly important. We saw the numbers of how many are waiting for kidneys. We need living donors to help attack uh, that waiting list. BCA, Howard talked about the hands and the face. Uh, sharing those stories, many people haven't heard those stories or, or know about those efforts. Looking at new portals of entry, kind of what I talked about with the National Registry. Looking at corporate partners uh, to drive exposure and cultural acceptance. Say if uh, you go to IBM and as part of their uh, health uh, benefits program, they give their employees opportunity to sign up as donors and they give them that opportunity every single year through that. The Thank You Project is a really cool idea that, that hopefully will get off the ground. And I liken it to those of you that are AAA members. You know, your AAA members, you get a discount at a, a hotel or, or wherever, the restaurant or wherever. Um, the idea is, if you're assigned an organ donor, if you, we develop these partnerships, let's say uh, with Radisson or Marriott. You go to stay at a Marriott, you get 5% off if you're a designated organ donor and you're licensed. Kind of thanking the people that have already taken that step and not just asking them to sign up and then forgetting about them. Yeah. Asking them to sign up and then do something about it and, and thank them for it. So just a real quick, a couple of statistics that maybe are, are new to you. We're now up to 22 people a day that have passed away, uh, which that number uh, continues to climb. And every 10 minutes, they say now that a new person is added to that waiting list. I mentioned that 81% of the transplants in 2015 came from deceased donors, and over a million tissue transplants are happening every single year, which is a really huge deal. With that, any questions that I can uh, answer for you? Yeah. <coughs> well, for the uh, national website, one of the things that's important to know there that anyone over the age of 13 can register on the national website. So although someone's not legally uh, that's why I tell the schools now, I say, look, even though you're not legal, it isn't legal until you turn 18, at a younger age you can register today. Additionally on there, after you put that information in, they have a comment there. You can do selectivity. One of the things you can't do for your driver's license, you can put in there things that that'll be honored at the time you do that. One of the things with the, you, I keep saying um, 22 people a day die. You know, um, statistics only supports less than 20. And you know, is the you one that's actually, out with us. Well, you know, there's they only 70 people, 22. Well, there were 7,100 people that died last, died in 2014. I didn't see the numbers for 2015, but that's all. They're going the wedding list. So how do you get these numbers that are higher than what they... So the numbers uh, are calculated from not only the patients on the waiting list that passed away waiting, but also the patients that had to be taken off because they were too sick. But um, no so that's where you know, the, that saying, number no. came directly from you know, so that's I understand released, that. Yeah. But it doesn't, so that's they don't they, have any way of supporting that after the person gets off. I mean, if yeah. you took the number of people that were taken off the waiting list, you'd double that number to be up around 38, I think. Right. But it's like, it's you know, kind of interesting. They keep putting out numbers that they, their numbers don't support. <laughs> I'll see if I can find some more uh, background. All, I, all I'll say is 20 because I can't find anything that supports me. Well, even if it's one, <laughs> that's too many. So, you know, yeah. it doesn't really do that. Todd, does that national registry feed into the local state registries? No. no. So it does Gift of Life then have to check two registries? Yes. Okay. Yes, and our, our, our staff has been trained on how to do that. Okay, just what just want to leave you with those taglines you maybe saw on the bottom. Organ, eye, and tissue donors are life donors, and what can you make possible? You know, think about everybody individually. What can you make possible for those patients that are waiting? 
that's what we're all here for. Any other questions? Okay, anybody hungry? <laughs>